uh, welcome back. We're going to be going into uh, details of how uh, figuring pre-production um, was done. Uh, first, I'm going to start with how did we get to fund the film, you know, because funding is one of the most critical aspect, you know, of filmmaking. Um, and that's, I think that's the most difficult as well, uh, because there are loads of people out there with, you know, a lot of ideas. But when it comes to funding, uh, funding limits, you know, your ideas, funding affect, um, you know, the, the type of film you're going to make. It, it, everything revolves around funding. Uh, so for figuring, remember we've made the Rapada. And uh, after we made Rapada, it means that um, to a large extent we've uh, proven that it is something we can do. So it was easy for us um, to seek um, partnership, especially in the area of sponsorship. Um, two things: if you're looking to fund film, of course there are. Apart from you know the fact that you pr probably have parents or family or friends who have money and who can give you. Um, a lot of money to do these things. Aside those ones, there are two other options, investors and sponsors. The type of proposal you write to sponsors, of course, is different from the type of proposals you write to investors. The type of proposals you write to sponsors, you know, should majorly state the benefits. And benefit not in terms of, you know, um, uh, money return, is in terms of uh, service that you are giving back because it's like butter. Uh, you know, sometimes some of these companies will give you products. Some of them will give you things that, you know, will reduce your cost drastically. And they will ask, what are you giving us back? And then you can then look at, okay, I'm setting this scene. Uh, like we mentioned, the, the Mercedes Benz, that would have saved us uh, the cost of having to rent, you know, uh, a luxury car, you know, for the film. And there are so many other areas where, you know, you can see partnership um, and seek sponsors, you know, and, and get your budget subsidized. But if you're talking to investors, all an investor is interested in is ROI, return on investment. They might say to you, okay, we're gonna put money in the film, we'll put a certain amount, and when it comes out, we take certain percentage in terms of return. And for us at that time, we were seeking more of um, sponsors. Why? Because uh, we really didn't have a structure that gives detailed report of um, revenue, you know, revenue streams and what you get and what you make from film. Uh, you are the producer, you are also the marketer, you are the distributor, you are everything. So it's difficult to have record of, okay, this is what, or even do sales projection. It was so, so difficult at that time to do sales projection. So you have to make do with what is on ground. Uh, so most times the investors usually, you know, find it difficult to relate with our pitch when we talk to them because there is only one language. I put this amount, I get this amount back. So when you're pitching and you're saying, hey, I'm not sure, uh, nobody will even look at your side. But for us, I was able to get loan. I get certain amount from bank. And um, of course, um, I got money from friends as well. Um, I also pawned some of, the, some of my items. Uh, because that time, what we, what, I wanted to do a figuring, according to one of my mentors, was suicide. You know, uh, because I remember going to Mr. Tundeke Lani, TK, you know, and, uh, you know, he said to me, Kule, are you sure about this? You know, uh, I saw a film, Apocalypto by, by Mel Gibson, and I said to myself, this is the level that I want to go in terms of quality and production value. And at that time, everybody, you know, apart from mainframe, um, everybody was just doing pure video that does not get graded or color corrected. Uh, the sound is all mixed, you know, on one computer. So um, a lot was compromised. And I said, look, I want to take it to another level. I was looking to get a DOP and I asked around 
And then I reached out to um, John Dems, who has done a few things in Nigeria. I said to John, John, have you seen Apocalypto? And he said, yes. I said, can you please recommend something we can use? I mean, in terms of equipment that will give us something close or similar to that. And he said to me, uh, Conley, that is like eye level, but you know. And he recommended some cameras and some, you know, camera equipment, which I eventually got. Um, it was Sony EX3. Uh, the lens is detachable and you can attach, you know, another lens. And at that time, they were doing a uh, 35mm adapter for cameras. So we got the lettuce adapter, 35mm, and then got, a, you know, of course, ultra prime lenses from, from you know, NFC in Joss. And that was what we used to shoot. But eventually, uh, John couldn't shoot a film, and someone introduced Yenka Edward to me. Uh, at that time, Yenka um, had only done, um, you know, documentaries, and um, um, I didn't see any feature film that is done. And he showed me the documentary he did, and all I saw was production value. Eventually, Yenka was the one that shot the film. Bosse Oshi managed uh, the production, and um, I remember, you know, in the course of also trying to uh, raise funds, we wrote to Mycom Hotel and Resort in Ocean State, Ada, and at that time they were really excited, and they came on board, and you know, the partnership really helped us subsidize um, our budget. But beyond that, they we got amazing location in Oshun State. Just by the virtue of this partnership, part of the deal with Mycom was um, they will partner, but we have to set most of the scenes, you know, at the resort. You know, so that allows us to, I mean, use not just their own uh, uh, space, but also to go beyond. When we saw what was on ground, came up with a budget and we realized that there's no way we can raise that amount. Then we approached uh, Jungle Film Works. You know, and um, I met with them and discussed, you know, what we need. And we put a list together. And at the end of the day, uh, they gave us like huge discount, you know, and um, what we agreed was we're gonna give them, you know, co-producers credit. And that was exactly what we did. And, you know, it was such a cool partnership. So if you watch Figuring today, you're gonna see um, a Golden Effect pictures or in association with Jungle Film Works. You know, so these are some of the things that uh, you can do. Those are some of the areas you can also, uh, you know, approach a production company and pitch, um, you know, how you feel that both parties, you know, can leverage and do, you know, something that will be of mutual benefit, you know, to the two companies. So that was what we did. And there's no regret of any sort. And today we still do a lot of things together with Jungle Film Works. As part of the pre-production, we needed to carve, you know, the figurine and, um, you know, decide uh, what is going to look like. We didn't want to use any original sculpture that is already in existence. We wanted to create our own figurine. When we got to Shobo, someone was introduced to us and we went to visit him. And we saw a lot of things that he has done. And, you know, after a lot of interaction, we decided that he's the one that will carve, you know, the figure in. According to how I understood the theme to be, we need a sculpture which don't have a direct connection with the culture of the black race or the Yorubas, and at the same time have expression of humanity, expression of life. And this expression to me, talking about life, it's first think about breast. A human breast, there's a woman's breast. That is where the life comes from. Without milk, you can't survive. And also the, the, the jewel, which we call the, the, uh, the, the, the box hole in here, that has to be some, some magical powers in it. Yeah. And the whole figure is naked, because life is naked, we cover it with clothes. So, I mean, we've talked about how you want to fund your next film. I mean, with all of those that I've analyzed, you know, that should be able to help you. 
after the figuring uh, got carved, we started looking for location. And next is Reiki. You know, when you have a script, you have to first identify how you want to shoot. Some people shoot in studios, so it's preset. You know, everything is already rigged and they go in and they just do what they need to do. And um, some of us like to shoot location. So with figuring, I think our first location recce uh, was when myself, Sheon Shoyenka, and uh, Bosse or she traveled to Ada. And we went to check out the locations. Uh, I think with Pat Nebo, we saw amazing landscape, hills, you know, uh, valley, rock. You know, amazing, amazing landscape. At the beginning, where you have kids having their bath at the stream and with some people in uh, sack outfits. We shot that in Oshun Shogbo Groove. I've always wanted to film in Oshun Shogbo. And the groove, if you go there, nature, you can't get it wrong with nature. When the script was ready, I got on board um, um, Biodun Akpantaku, who was a product, who was a location manager, and um, you know he went through the script, and I, took, I gave him an idea of you know the kind of locations I would like to have, and he went out there, you know, to look for all these things. <laughs> the NYSE camp was shot in Ede. What we did was during the planning, because Bosse Oshin was the production manager, we wrote to um, uh, the camp and, you know, just, you know, as God will have it, uh, the day we scheduled to shoot, we were told that, okay, they've already resumed. We used some of the um, NYC uh, members, you know, who were there, you know, that, during the shoot, you know, as part of the shoot. And it was really quite an experience. I mean, we were really grateful that, you know, the NYC, you know, obliged us that opportunity because it would have been difficult to put together, um, you know, that kind of crowd, even though you can do a lot with CGI and all of that, but I like to shoot originally. We got some extras, you know, and we mixed them with the camp people so that if we're shooting, uh, and those were the guys that, you know, you do close up of them in case you want to shoot somewhere else and you need, you know, these guys, you know, it's important to always have extras that you can have control of because we did a lot outside of the camp you know so when we're doing that we'll just go with our extras and the extras you're gonna get ensure that they are locked throughout the the period of the shoot because um you might want to do a reshoot or you might want to do a retake and you would have done close-ups and all of that on some people and next day you won't find them again so you have to be sure that whoever is handling your extras you know, is on top of, of the game because that way you don't run into, into problem. We had so much flexibility, you know, in, in Oshun State. So with figuring, um, you know, the first seven years of prosperity was mostly shot in Oshun, especially the camp and where to shoot the other seven years, you know, in Lagos at the beach resort. Uh, no, not a beach resort, a lagoon house. That's what the script says. Before we finished in Oshun, we couldn't lock a location for the Lagos shoot. So we said, no, we'll go and finish first in Oshun. And when we come back, then we'll look for location in Lagos. So as part of the recce, you know, lagoon house is supposed to be their house when, um, you know, they're 
back and reach and all of that. And we went to several houses in Lagos and a lot of people won't allow film shoots in their house. And we got stuck. I remember we went to my cousin's office and I know he has a beach house. You know, I was there lamenting to him and he showed me the picture of the beach house in the night. And he said, Kole, look at this. If, I mean, if you can use this, then what? So I looked at it and to me, I had to take a decision at that time. I remember we were filming some scenes in his office and when he showed me, you know, for me, I, the first, next person I would first call would be Padnebo, who is the art director. And then Yin Castle, we all can decide, okay, for lighting, for mood, you know, for logistics uh, and everything, does it work or not? I showed it to them and we all agreed that, look, this even will help the story better. Because the Lagoon House would have been a gigantic house with a lot of light and all of that by the water. But this beach house is just a standalone house built with wood and a bit of bricks. And it's so, you know, it's eclectic and it has some very, you know, shady feel to it. And we said, this works better, you know? Creative people always think alike. And that was how we ended up using a beach house uh, instead of a lagoon house. It was really quite an experience because sometimes for me, you know, when you read a script, the script describes the scene. Um, a lot of times for me, not until I see my location that I really get a true picture of what I want to do. You know, so once I see the location, then it is possible that certain things will change you know, from the original description in the script. And most times the script is just a guide for me, you know. Um, uh, but the good thing about what I do is every time an idea comes to me, I call the original writer, we discuss it, and we agree, you know, if, um, you know, whether to change it or not. As part of the pre-production, I remember that you know, the head of the art department was Pat Nebo. And Pat Nebo, um, at that time, we decided to uh, draw, sketch the key characters, the lead, char lead characters. That is Femi, Shola, Mona, and Linda. You know, those are the key characters. And then, and then Pat Nebo and I decided what look Femi is going to wear, what look Shola is going to wear, uh, what look Mona and Linda will wear. You know, and you know, all of these were sketched by Pat Nebo. Then the crew met and we decided to like the the I remember during the pre-production meetings, uh, the wardrobe and costume person, OBJ, will have to read the script, then give in details what each character will wear. And then Pat Nebo and I would then take it further and you know, I mean, I agree to some, maybe, I mean, you know, have some changed. We were very, very detailed. We're gonna continue this in the next episode. We'll go into details of why who was casted as what and the process.